Master? I didn't expect to see you so soon. The world between worlds, then, you know, it's not about time travel. It's really not about time travel at all. It's just about a place where everything comes together and you hear different things echoing throughout time. Because it's all fluid in that moment, in that place. It's not this material thing that's linear. Everything is occurring all the time. And Ezra is more in tune with the things that are directly related to him, like when he was on Malachor and saw Ahsoka, like when he saw Kanan die. These things reverberate to him and he understands them more. The other voices he doesn't even understand. He doesn't know those people. Hello? Master Yoda? Obi-Wan? They're just like the wind moving and he recognizes some like Obi-Wan and Yoda, but he doesn't understand the context of anything that's going on. I don't know how real it actually is. I don't want to define that for people anyway. But it's not this place of gateways and doorways that you just go in and out of. Now Ezra can pull Ahsoka into that world. But remember, she's smart enough to know that she can't leave that world through his door. She'll be destroying the natural balance and order of things. She has to go back from where she came. It's the same with Kanan. I can reach him. Ezra. Kanan gave his life so that you could live. When you understand that, if he pulls him out of that world, he, he's got to put him back in a world where everybody's dead. And then you know that, wait, Ezra couldn't have even been in that world then. And so everything will break and will cause chaos and will cause destruction. So it's not this system of doorways, like you're on an elevator, getting off on different floors in different times. It's more like what the wolf tells Ezra. It's more about knowledge. Knowledge that you can use for your benefit of good or knowledge that will lead to destruction. That's what it's about. But it, it's not my intention that it be this ability to walk through into somebody else's world. We have to keep being dedicated to being original and creative. And sometimes we take chances and sometimes we do weird things like Crepe Bendu or you know, Mysterious Wolves. And, but I think as long as you work off the principles of the force that George set up, that it, it doesn't change it and you don't a road what makes Star Wars special. Welcome back, everyone. Is Charlie Dave Filoni did a much bigger explainer on how the world between worlds works and how everyone's able to see each other, everyone's still alive while this is happening, even though they're coming from different points in their timeline. So I'll explain how Anakin Skywalker returns, how he appears in this place, even though he's the Clone Wars aged Anakin, and Ahsoka fell off the cliff and almost died, almost, but was also pulled into the world between worlds. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get them. We're also doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post all your Ahsoka and Anakin Skywalker theories on the video. Dave Filoni here uses all the World Between Worlds stuff that he's introduced so far between Star Wars Rebels, now in Ahsoka in live action, to explain what the World Between Worlds actually is, how it exists, and what happens when you're inside of it. There aren't necessarily any rules about how you use it, like it just exists and people can use it however they want to, but he also explains some of the consequences of what they do when they're inside here. The world between worlds is kind of like another layer of reality that's connected to every moment in time and space all at the same time. I made the joke in an earlier video, everything, everywhere, all at once. You could also make the Harry Potter reference too, like the pathways that Anakin and Ahsoka are walking on right now are kind of like platform nine and three quarters, and the world between worlds is kind of like a train depot with railways connecting to all moments everywhere in time and space. Dave Filoni also explains it's not meant to be just as simple as that, like it's not just a bunch of gateways you can enter and exit at different moments in the timeline and different places in the universe. Those gateways do exist here, like you can do that, but there's a couple important reasons why you should not do that. Typically the ones that Ezra and Ahsoka see when they're walking around in the world between worlds, then in Ahsoka episode 5 in live action that Ahsoka and Anakin will see as they continue to walk around and talk with each other will be portals to other time periods that are specific to the people that are witnessing them. Places and times that were meaningful to them, but not always, for example, like when Ezra enters, he hears voices from Leia, from Obi-Wan Kenobi, from different parts of the timeline, from the different Star Wars movies. Because he hasn't experienced those, those are coming from the future, he has no idea who those people are. Like, he doesn't know who Obi-Wan Kenobi is yet, and he doesn't know who Princess Leia is yet. 
So that'll also probably happen to Anakin and Ahsoka in this place too. And you have to remember that this is Anakin coming from the Clone Wars. So a lot of the stuff that they see will probably be from his future that he will not have experienced yet. That's part of the reason why they played that Darth Vader music at the end of the episode. One of the other examples that Dave Filoni used was Emperor Palpatine also trying to enter the world between worlds back in one of his Sith temples around that same time period. Like this was meant to be Palpatine from that same era during the Star Wars Rebel series. So it's not like the world between worlds just exists in this moment just for Anakin and Ahsoka or back during Star Wars Rebels for Ahsoka and Ezra Bridger. Like you have people from all across time and space everywhere in the timeline trying to enter and exit this place simultaneously. They just didn't show all of them on screen when this was happening. So theoretically, when Ahsoka is seeing Anakin Skywalker here in this moment on the Ahsoka series later in her timeline, while this is happening, like in the exact same time period, Ezra and Ahsoka are walking around a different part of the world between worlds having their experience too because everything here happens at the same time you'd have this other Ahsoka and Anakin walking around a different part of the world between worlds in the same moment. There's a whole bunch of Ahsokas, a whole bunch of Anakins, a whole bunch of everybody else just walking around the world between worlds all at the same time. Dave Filoni then explains why Ahsoka can't just pull Anakin Skywalker from the past, the Clone Wars era, into her present day, thus saving him theoretically from ever becoming Darth Vader. Just as earlier, before A New Hope, when she was in the world between worlds with Ezra, he couldn't save Kanan from dying by yoinking him before he died. I can stop Kanan from dying! You can't save your master, and I can't save mine. I made the reference in an earlier video about how this is like the last temptation of Ahsoka. She'll be tempted to save Anakin Skywalker, even though she probably won't, because if Ahsoka were to try and save Anakin Skywalker, they'd be erasing everything those people ever did or influenced after these moments. The butterfly effect would happen, changes would ripple out, it would just make things worse and worse and worse theoretically in those timelines. They don't get too deep into the weeds on how time travel works in the Star Wars universe during this trailer video here, and it's a little bit like the way time travel works on the Loki series. If you were able to time travel into the past, you could change something, but you wouldn't be changing your own past. You'd just be creating a branch timeline. So you wouldn't be changing your own future. You'd just be creating a totally new timeline with a totally different future. So if Ahsoka were to try and save Anakin by pulling him into her present day, she wouldn't be changing her own past. She'd just be creating a new timeline where he never became Darth Vader and just didn't exist in that timeline for about 30 plus years because he'd just be jumping forward into present day. During his past year where he came from, Padme wasn't pregnant with Luke and Leia yet, so they would have never been born. The Rebellion probably never would have defeated the Empire, Darth Vader would never have killed the Emperor, the Rebels might never have destroyed the first Death Star because Luke Skywalker never existed to destroy the first Death Star. Then things probably just continue to get worse in that particular new branch timeline that Ahsoka created where Anakin did not exist. But even still, Ahsoka sees Anakin here, he's alive, he's not a force ghost, she understands how the world between worlds works fundamentally, she's been here before, like, oh, I remember this place. So she knows that it's really him that she's talking to here, she isn't quite sure how she wound up in here, uh, how Anakin wound up in here, but she gets what's happening in this moment. She gets a chance to see him again as he was before everything went to shit. Glory days, Anakin Skywalker. According to reports, a lot of episode 5 will be spent with Ahsoka and Anakin doing something similar to what Ahsoka and Ezra did when they were in the world between worlds, but with the roles flipped, like they'll look through different portals to different moments in Ahsoka's past. There's supposed to be a Clone Wars flashback with Anakin in his Clone Wars armor and a younger Ahsoka. I don't know who's playing that younger version of Ahsoka. There might also be a flashback to Ahsoka versus Darth Vader and their fight in the Sith Temple during Twilight of the Apprentice in Star Wars Rebels. Which is also where we get to the idea that this Anakin Skywalker will witness some of his future because those events will not have happened for this Anakin yet. This is where Dave Filoni explains the real value of the world between worlds. It's all about knowledge of the past and the future and how you use that knowledge. Think about how this would affect both Ahsoka and Anakin. Anakin will be able to see his future, how he falls to the dark side, Order 66, how he becomes Darth Vader, but on the good side of that, he might be able to see the birth of Luke and Leia. Maybe if we're lucky, he'll also get to see his redemption on the second Death Star when he saves Luke Skywalker by killing the Emperor. And if he sees his future, any parts of his future, think about how that would completely recontextualize all the Star Wars movies and all the stuff that takes place after the Clone Wars particularly the events of the original trilogy, he'd be living through all these years after Revenge of the Sith, ultimately knowing that he'd be destined to kill the Emperor, that Luke and Leia, his children, were alive out in the galaxy somewhere. So think about how that would affect him. 
they kind of danced around this problem of pre-knowledge during the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Like, they never had Darth Vader and young Leia be that close to each other in scenes, enough for him to sense her through the Force. That's why, if you probably noticed, Darth Vader was never at the Fortress Inquisitorius when Leia was there. Otherwise, he would have sensed who she was through the Force and would have completely changed the timeline. He would have turned her into another Inquisitor. They actually covered that storyline during a Star Wars What If comic book back when Dark Horse was still doing the Star Wars comics. Leia briefly turns to the dark side, winds up having to fight Luke Skywalker on the Death Star instead of Luke Skywalker facing Darth Vader. Maybe someday they'll do a What If Star Wars series. That would be pretty cool. Let me know in the comments, do you think that Anakin will see some moments from his future in the World Between Worlds, and how do you think that he'll react to Darth Vader? The other big idea Dave Filoni gets into is what's going to happen after Ahsoka and Anakin are done talking to each other, reminiscing on old times and seeing a bunch of flashbacks from their shared history. During the Star Wars Rebels episode, Ahsoka realized she couldn't just jump through Ezra's portal into his present day because she'd be creating another branch timeline. She had to find a way to go back through the portal that he pulled her from to the Sith Temple, which was in the middle of collapsing, by the way. But now that she knows what's going to happen, she has an escape plan. She's able to survive, as is Darth Vader, to continue into the future where you see her in present day. So likely what'll happen at the end of Ahsoka and Anakin Skywalker's adventure in Episode 5 in The World Between Worlds is that Anakin will realize that he has to go back through his portal to the Clone Wars era that he came from, and Ahsoka will have to go back through her portal to the Sea Toast planet where she just left from. Right now, without more evidence, I think that Mirai in the Mortis Gods pulled both of them into the World Between Worlds. Because Ahsoka was falling off the cliff, she would have had to have been pulled in by someone, and Mirai shows up all the time when Ahsoka shows up. So Mirai might show up somewhere during Episode 5 as well. There was an owl during The Mandalorian Season 2 when Ahsoka cameoed, so let me know if you think that Mirai will also be part of the reason why both she and Anakin wound up in the World Between Worlds. The real reason why the Mortis Gods probably orchestrated this event that we're seeing happen here is so that Ahsoka can see the danger that Thrawn's return will pose. Like, she'll learn a little bit about their own future timeline with Thrawn's return in the upcoming Heir to the Empire movie. She'll learn a little bit more about this grand plan that Balin Skull has for the galaxy that he teased, and she'll be able to use that knowledge to help them fight Thrawn, even though we know that he's coming back and there will be a giant movie where they have their Star Wars. So, like, ultimately some of this stuff will play out no matter what. And Anakin will probably just return to his time period in the Clone Wars and won't necessarily change anything using advanced knowledge of the future, but his internal motivation will fundamentally change so that when you're seeing him later in the timeline, his reasons for doing things will change. So post all your theories in the comments below. My full episode 5 video will post next week after they release it. Click here for that. I'll update the link as soon as I post it. And click here for all my Ahsoka episode videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.